The UCAT is the UK's only specialist construction union which organises 80,000 workers in the public and private sectors and allied industries. Our members range from rookies to construction engineers, from crane drivers to carpenters. We represent a skilled workforce in a highly technical industry where teamwork and communication skills are essential. Construction workers basically make the country go along. They build the houses, they maintain them. The whole infrastructure of the whole country is built around construction workers. Without the construction industry, the country can't work. We need the construction industry because we need the offices, we need the housing. Everything in this country basically relies on construction. It's always been said that one job in construction creates three additional jobs within the economy, grows the economy, grows people's opportunities, gives apprenticeships out and equally as importantly, if not more importantly, it puts people back in homes that they've not got. You take away construction, there's not much left of the fabric of society. It's everything. It should be classed as the most important industry in the country. If we go on the moon, the first people there will be construction workers to build the pods. But what I'm trying to say to you is, so the only thing they can do to us then is keep us fragmented so we can't organise. UCAT operates at all levels of the construction industry. It represents workers' interests at the highest level, including national health and safety forums, negotiating and skills bodies. On the shop floor, it has shop stewards, conveners, health and safety reps and union learning reps. The main contractor, in my opinion, should be employing the worker. If you subcontract the work out and it's subbed and subbed again, it's passing on the responsibilities. The issue of uh, holiday pay, the issue of, of travel time, the issue of health and safety, the issue of employment rights. Many construction workers who are both self-employed aren't aware that they've got all these rights, the same as directly employed construction workers, and that is the message that we've got to get across. There are hundreds of thousands of building workers every year who will never be members of a pension scheme and who will never properly be able to uh, draw on benefits for the future or for their family because they've been bogusly labelled self-employed. And the itinerant nature of the industry, they could be working in, for example, here, Durham one month and in Middlesbrough the next. Policies and terms and conditions change all the time with every job you go into. So what may have been relevant in one job may not be in another job. So the fact that you've got officials and reps out there being active, trying to help people, is a lot more beneficial to make sure that an individual keep their job for longer. UCAT campaigns on many issues from holiday pay, canteen facilities and increased pensions to challenging gang masters and false self-employment. But UCAT's work to protect its members' health and safety is the most important issue in Britain's most dangerous industry. People are uh, obviously under pressure to complete the job. They'll be under pressure to take shortcuts when they shouldn't be taking shortcuts. And that's one of the reasons that obviously working for UCAT as a convener on site, we represent the guys and say, no, you don't do that. If a manager tells you or a supervisor tells you to do something which is unsafe, no matter how much pressure they put on you, there's always somebody there, and UCAT are a great example of that, to protect you. Everybody's trying to cut money, so therefore if something needs scaffolding, but the company may believe they can do it off a ladder, they want you to do it off a ladder. Sometimes being a site convener is like being an agony art. You get everyone's problems coming to you at Walls Yard. Whether it's to do with work unions or what, you seem to be the person they all come to look, talk to when they've got a problem. It's a proven fact that by having someone like myself on this site, it's brought down injuries, deaths. There's not been a death on this project. There certainly hasn't been a life-threatening injury on this project. Construction operatives have got the macho image. They don't want to talk to people. They're, they'll not admit to breaking down and crying. So people will work on when they shouldn't be at work. 
You work in some horrendous conditions, heavy rain, cold, and it's stressful. In some sites, people are made to work in the rain if they don't get paid. On this site, we tell them they must come out of the rain, it's unsafe, the guys are then told to go into the canteen or do something inside. We don't allow people, certainly scaffolders, steel fixers, to work in the rain. They're told to wait in the canteen and they're also paid on this site if they're actually weighed off. People obviously need to earn money so they'll come to work when they shouldn't be coming to work. That's all, I mean, not just a physical toll, that's got a mental toll on them. The last thing you probably want on your record is the stigma of them having a mental breakdown and then coming back to work again because people, no matter whether it's right or wrong, will look at you in a different way. Management's footprint in our health and safety is absolutely massive and it's not a positive one. It's often a negative one and we need to be able to work and communicate that. The employer has key obligations. They will often push it, particularly you know, if they can bully you, harass you, to do the job, they'll get away with it. If members know what the rights are, it's having and being empowered to refuse that part of the job that's dangerous. One of the easiest things is often to say, well, if you want me to do it, can you put it in writing? Because they don't want to start a paper trail because they want to try and use our ignorance or our fear to get the job done. What we'd like you to do, just identify what are the key issues you're facing at the workplace at the moment. A range of different sectors, private sector, housing, people with a wealth of experience. Some of these things never go away. You know, you can drop into this industry at any time in history <laughs> and the same issues were probably around at that time. Want you to identify what you think are the top 10 health and safety challenges or issues that you face. So have a general discussion, but then filter it down. What are the top 10 things that you're facing and you're dealing with? And how would you describe on the last question your dealings with employer on things like health, safety and welfare, just give us a general roundup on occupational health, sickness, absence, and also on environmental matters. Yeah. Uh, you said documentation, isn't it? Yeah. Documented, yeah. 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 You need access, access to all the documentation. And access, yeah. In the real world comes to mind, doesn't it? In the real world, people die. You know? Let's go to a world where people don't die and make that real. Anything else? Unfortunately, I was diagnosed as having pleural plaques recently. It's um, where the asbestos fibres uh, break through the walls of the lungs. Um, and the, the lungs try to protect themselves uh, and they calcify the, the, um, the actual fibres because they can't get rid of them. So they just calcify them, so the lungs become um, scarred. Some employees went to remove a ceiling, were notified that the ceiling was negative, that it didn't contain any asbestos. I actually then uh, took down the ceiling, and then two days later on were notified by the employer, obviously that the, the ceiling was actually positive, it did actually contain asbestos. That in that situation it was representing the members, making sure they notified their doctor, and then consulting with the employer so that it doesn't happen again. UCAT offers a free phone employment advice service for matters inside and outside the workplace. If members are wrongly dismissed, have problems with wages or are injured at work, we employ That's specialist union easy. lawyers to give free legal advice and much, representation. Much easier if you do what you can do to make sure that we have the evidence to win our cases. <laughs>The important thing to remember is that members have to prove on the balance of probabilities, i.e. that it's more likely than not, that the accident occurred as they said it occurred. And so it's, the onus is on us, not on the employer. We have to prove, the employer doesn't have to disprove, all the employer has to do is put up a defence. The problem from our point of view is we, we only get one bite of the cherry. We have to put forward a credible reason for why an accident occurred, usually supported by evidence and usually with an argument as to why the employer was in the wrong. And this is the fourth occasion now in the last um, few weeks, few months, uh, where there's been a death just in the London area alone. We're here for Daniel Rupsey, uh, who's from Lithuania, 33 years of age, with children, uh, 
and another one who was injured as well. Already, as we've seen over a number of years, you know, the death rates have been 40, 50 per year. And our view is, very, very sadly, that that is only going to increase with the 35% cuts in the health and safety executive. UCAT is an internationalist union which offers practical solidarity to workers in other countries who need our help. UCAT leaders recently visited Qatar to expose the plight of exploited construction workers. Our General Secretary has since been elected to the Global Board monitoring Qatar's behaviour towards its building workers. No, no, it's not on it. You've got this building for embassy. Yeah, no, 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 we won't remove it. You don't have any permission for No, 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 it doesn't matter. It's a public footpath. Call the police. World champions at killing workers. Yeah, get that embassy bit in, yeah. Qataris, world champions at killing workers. Today is about how Qataris are treating migrant labour in their country. 600 workers killed last year, migrant labour. The appalling living conditions that they're forced to live in and they're working under kafala system, which is bonded labour. So they can't escape the country. It's an outrage, it's modern day slavery. We're here to tell them to stop killing workers. If they don't stop killing workers, then we want FIFA to pull out of the World Cup in Qatar right, in 2022. Okay. It's estimated between now and 2022, more than 4,000 workers can be killed in Qatar, building stadium and the infrastructure. And they put it down to heart attacks because there's no compensation for workers who die of natural causes, and that's heart attacks. An outrage, absolute outrage. This is the richest country per capita on earth and yet they're paying workers less than 60 pence an hour and killing them. That's why we're here today, and that's why we won't go away until we get some answers. This is a very, very important day, Workers' Memorial Day, when we come together to remember the 42 construction workers that have been killed on our sites this year. Also to remember the thousands of other construction workers that have been killed from industrial-related diseases throughout the year. As Terry rightly says, 42 construction workers killed in this country. Thousands die from diseases. Hundreds and hundreds are injured so badly that they'll never go back to work again. And this Tory government are giving us 35% cuts to the HSE. There's going to be nobody to police or monitor the construction sites that we see in front of us. So support the trade unions. Let's go away from here today. Let's get safety reps on building sites and let's make the building sites a much safer place for our members, for construction workers. Thank you very much. My name is Simon Hester. I'm uh, an HSE inspector. We investigate accidents and often we're investigating fatalities. And to be honest with you, HSE is way too understaffed to be able to deal with this. There are thousands of construction sites. There are 26 construction inspectors in London. We can't deal with all that. It's massively understaffed. And this is the main reason I'm here, because the slogan of Workers' Memorial Day is remember the dead, fight for the living. The UCAT is a democratic, member-led union. The General Secretary is elected every five years by the Union's members. UCAT is divided into nine regions and the members in each region elect one person to sit on the Union's lay Executive Council which is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the Union and the General Council, the Union's appeals body. Every two years, UCAT holds a National Delegate Policy Making Conference. UCAT's over 180 years old. It's an amalgamation of craft unions, so we've got deep history that all of us should be very, very proud of. Our officials work out of the regions. The officials are nearly all ex-construction workers. We have a regional secretary in each of the regions. We have a lay executive. We also have a general council. So we're very in-depth organisation, but it's important to remember 
that it is a member-led organisation. We have a UKIP parliamentary group that's carefully chosen. A number of them have construction-related backgrounds, but we don't limit ourselves to just working with the UKIP group. We work across the Parliamentary Labour Party with MPs with good working-class credentials. Madam Deputy Speaker, by the time I was indentured as an apprentice bricklayer in 1978, and notwithstanding the introduction of the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, Britain's building sites were still workplaces of great danger. We are well respected in the political arena, and it's recognised we punch well above our weight. We're affiliated to the Labour Party and central to a number of the key bodies within the constitution of the Labour Party. I listen to what some of my counterparts on the benches opposite talk and, and say about health and safety. And I think to myself, it's very unlikely that any of the Bullingdon boys' children are going to end up on Britain's building sites. My lad's an apprentice electrician and very proud that he's, he's taken that up. It's a great trade and he's... You know, he's, he's doing his best at, a, at the moment in difficult circumstances. If you are Labour, then we want Labour councillors, we want Labour MPs and we want Labour MEPs, right? And Labour people do a better job than the other lot, whoever the other lot are, at every level. UCAT has political influence through MPs and MEPs who argue the union's case. We are affiliated to the Labour Party and have a seat on the party's National Executive Committee. UCAT works hard to achieve improved national agreements on pay, terms and conditions and pensions. One of the main bodies we work through is the Construction Industry Joint Council. The CIJC Working Rule Agreement covers over half a million workers and UCAT is the main union negotiating for workers covered by the agreement. We're here to protest against a derisory pay offer that's been offered by the uh, construction employers in the private sector as it, it amounts to nothing more than poverty pay. We deserve a pay rise because we're in the most dangerous industry out there in construction. We're losing people every year, which people don't seem to care about, and we should, the, the pay should reflect how dangerous this job is. If you look at industries across the board, you'll see that the CIJC offer is one of the lowest that's been made through all the sectors and uh, we're looking for a big improvement in that. If these talks don't work out, we'll have a bigger presence next time, but rest assured, we're going in there fighting. It's pay on the table what we need and not poverty pay. Because construction workers, after five or six years of recession and seeing no increase in their wages, are just not prepared to, to accept such treatment any longer and we'll be up for the fight when it comes. In 2009, the Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO, exposed details of a blacklisting operation run by a company called the Consulting Association. This company collated files on thousands of construction workers and sold the information to 44 construction companies. Many of these workers had their lives ruined, unable to find employment in the construction industry, blacklisted for their trade union activities or for raising health and safety concerns. We're picketing this site to uh, protest and highlight the McAlpine's in involvement in the blacklisting of uh, construction workers. So we've come down today, 20th of November, uh, National Blacklisting uh, Day, where we all protest up and down the country, different sites. This is going to culminate in uh, a lobby of Parliament today, where we're going to address the MPs and uh, ask them to, to, to review the, the way construction is, uh, is operating at the moment. I then had to go to Parliament and there was a, a meeting in one of the committee rooms there where I was sat alongside Chukaru Muna, Steve Murphy, our General Secretary, Francis O'Grady of the TUC and he suddenly realised that 
you're, you're in an arena here where this is going somewhere. There's people here who, who, who can take this fight for you. You're in the arena now, this is it, you're in Parliament. Raising health and safety issues in such an environment shouldn't be a crime. It shouldn't result in the blacklisting of workers, which is what happened to me and my workmate. With such an awful death toll, 39 last year, it was a duty to raise health and safety issues, and no one should be afraid to speak out. It's about the right to belong to a trade union. It's about the right to organise. It's about the right to represent fellow workers without fear of victimisation. So we want action, and we want action now. And you know, I'm proud of my members who've been campaigning against blacklisting throughout the UK today. I also say that I'm delighted to announce that this week, we, UCAT, have commenced legal proceedings against the companies involved in blacklisting for misuse of private information and a breach of confidence. But colleagues, comrades, we haven't stopped there. You all know the names of the rats who fed the information into the consulting association. They destroyed thousands of workers' lives. Well, today, I'm telling those individuals, you can run, but you can't hide. Mark my words, we are coming for you. And it's absolutely essential that we have a public inquiry into blacklisting. And that public inquiry cannot come soon enough. Thank you. This evil practice that has led to family breakdown, personal breakdown, financial ruin, suicide, illness, you name it, this impacts the lives of ordinary people and I will support in any way I can and do whatever it takes. I'm blacklisted now. There's no more they can do to me. So wherever they raise their heads, they'll find me and my colleagues ready to challenge them and face them down. The Shrewsbury Pickets, again, another incredibly important event that took place when we, along with other trade union leaders, delivered a petition to Number 10 Downing Street. Have you seen the Christmas cavalry? The reason behind the petition is because obviously the papers won't be released by the government of what actually happened during the strike and, and why the Shrewsbury Pickets were actually arrested and imprisoned. The truth won't come out and the reason that the government is saying that it won't come out is that it's state security. I mean, this happened 40 years ago, and the government is still saying they won't release the papers because of state security. What we're saying is, collectively, that those papers must be released and we must see the truth. UCAT is still fighting a 40-year campaign for justice for the 24 Shrewsbury pickets, wrongly arrested six months after the successful 1972 building workers' strike with UCAT member Des Warren and Ricky Tomlinson, star of TV's Royal Family, jailed for three years and two years respectively on conspiracy charges. In December 2013, 100,000 signatures were handed in to Downing Street calling for the government to release papers relating to the case. And I'm pleased to say that UCAT again played a role in that and we got lots of signatures on that petition. But of course what that petition did it created a parliamentary debate and so it was aired in Parliament. We now know more than ever before about the political, judicial, media and police manipulation that scarred the working lives of 24 ordinary men wrongly convicted on trumped up charges with six of them unjustly jailed. It's very interesting to see there are no less than 34 members of the Labour Party present uh, today. Uh, and trade unions, the honourable member says, thank, thank him for that helpful intervention. Uh, so it's quite clear that old Labour is still alive and well, yeah. and, and, and in some respects seeking both to justify and to romanticise mob rule and violence and intimidation. Do what you do, but do it well. <laughs> Say it again, Johnny. Do what you do, but do it well, because we are, Shrewsbury 24 are. We've got to start getting the youth of this country involved in it. 
paying them decent wages, let them know there's a future. We need, as a country in the construction industry, we need to push more and more companies to be taking on apprentices. There is a growing skills crisis in construction as a result of an ageing workforce and insufficient numbers of apprentices being trained. UCAT has a long history of promoting the use of high quality apprenticeships and supporting apprentices in securing permanent employment. I go out in the vans, I've got a teacher with us all the time, uh, he's a worker, fuck yeah, another joiner. So um, I go out on site with him and uh, he teaches us how to do all the stuff. Because if you learn a trade then you can do anything really. My message to other apprentices would be to join UCA. I think it's a good union that uh, you should be a part of. I think it can help you out a lot if you're in trouble. I think it's fair to say that UCA has always been seen as a male-dominated trades union. And I think it's incumbent on us to change that image. We just need a voice within this male-dominated workforce and UCAT have been promoting, you know, women joining for a, s some time now and I thought I, I was given the opportunity to become a steward and I thought, well, I if I'm there on site to help people, I, I think it's, you know, it's advantageous. Certain individuals make it very difficult for a female to work on site. You have to be very thick to skin to be able to go out on site and do the jobs that we do. Because you get told you need to get a sense of humour and that, and you're thinking, is it me? I'm being a bit mad, he asked, but you're not really. And you don't have to put up with it in this day and age, do you? If you're laying bricks. The male sometimes don't understand where, where a female might be coming from, and might, the female might need a, another female to talk to. So I, I feel it is very important and very vital, especially to you, Kat, to pull in more females, especially in the roles of shop stewards. Any job that you take up that's against the norm for your sex is going to be difficult to establish yourself within that group, but it is doable. We women who work on the shop floor are increasing. We went to UC last year, the women's conference for the first time, and we had plenty of support there, and we put our, you can't put their input in, we were up twice on the rostrum. I'm a bricklayer working on the tools in my housing association. UCAT recently conducted a survey of our women members. 51% reported discrimination because of their gender. Women working in construction have an absolute right to be treated equally to their male colleagues. And both unions and employers need to work far harder to ensure that occurs. UCAT has been part and parcel of opening learning centres around the country and indeed I opened one myself in North Tyneside with the TUC and again you know this offers something not only to our members but also to the community. I am from the local community and I come to use this facility down the road from where I live because I think a lot of people get rejected, well they feel re rejected but like I've gone the way, the way I feel but when I found out but these situations these facilities, you've got to have them to work together and it gives you more confidence to look for a job. UCAT is proud of its tradition of promoting and supporting lifelong learning, training and skills. Learning can transform the lives of working people and we are committed to creating opportunities and breaking down barriers to help our members gain new skills and qualifications. We have two union learning reps, me being one of those and Ian Lapsley being the other one who looks after the, the learning centre. I help to guide people towards training that they request and you know, look for training that's available. That's free, really. Um, English, maths, computers. Union learning reps very often have access to information that would never come for whatever reason and with no disrespect to a manager. We work in partnership with UCAT and Union Learn in, in this very room um, where the learners can come in, take part in the session, but also use the ICT facilities. We've started off with the workforce having IT courses because we found that the tradesmen were computer illiterate and the way that everything is moving, IT is becoming a big factor within day-to-day -day life. Knowledge is power and the more knowledge you can suck in the better. So uh, it's important because um, there's a lot of stuff 
that I don't know being a full-time rep that uh, I need to know and I could do with knowing for the future. Of course it's important that UCAP continues to recruit members and retain the members that it's got. Without members we don't have a union. Without a union the members don't have the support and representation that they vitally need. And I'm proud to say that over 1,200 people have actually joined UCAT uh, through me being here, giving them membership forms and getting them to sign up. Well, the benefits of being a UCAT member is obviously being a member of a large organisation, a very good organisation, is out there fighting for the rights of the, every construction worker in the UK. There's a lot of things that the union can do for you. You've got the backing, you've got people behind you with the knowledge that if you do have issues and things, you could, you know, they're only at the end of the phone. Because I'm a new cat, uh, I know that if I've got a problem at work, then I've got some protection. I know that uh, there's people that can help us out. You are very supportive. Um, we're trying to get on top of everything with health and safety. I'm looking to go into health and safety rep to bring more women into the industry. I didn't realise until I joined you, Kurt, how much help as a female I can get. If you're unhappy with the situation that you're put in at work, you could quite easily make that phone call, get yourself out of that situation. Oh, they help out with a lot of things like tax returns and just general things on site. If you've got a problem and you need help, they're always good to contact them and they help out. It's a must that people are in a trade union, and I'm going to say UCAT is the union to be in. There's a slogan, UCAT's got you covered. You are well covered, well represented as a UCAT member. UCAT regards its membership as an extended family that should be supported in every way possible. We are the UK's only union specialising in construction. Whatever the problem you encounter at work, we're here to help. We've got you covered. UCAT is building the future of construction. Let's go forward in solidarity.